In the last video, we considered what tools you might use when carrying out jobs to make them quicker. So we had a look at a lot of different things. If you didn't look at that already, go back and watch that first. Because this one now is about considering the job bottlenecks. It's a bit different in terms of this is the things that hold you up when you're trying to do the job. It's not necessarily tools. So this is other situations and scenarios that happen when you're trying to just go from start to finish continuously and get the thing done. So this is the sort of things that can actually hold you up when trying to carry it out. Hopefully that makes a difference in terms of how it's not to do with tools but other things. So some examples that are in the document that's attached to this page. So do you get delays off customers to and and throwing and not turning up and not answering the door and these sort of things? And by the way, all of these things we're looking at here are things that can be fixed and we will go deeper in some of these solutions later on. Whether it's a simple procedure change or whether there's actually something you can implement or something you can use, some software in some cases, whatever it is, or apps. So customer delays, do you get delayed from the customers? Do you keep getting regular traffic delays? You know, the routes you go, are they always busy? Do you keep getting lost now and then? I know here in Leeds, there's some locations that are really a bit of a nightmare to try and find a particular address. So whether it's because they have house names instead of house numbers, or the numbers on quite a lot of streets aren't very clear, or is it just a place, for example, on a satnav, you might get places where you have to get out and park, and then there's a, a like pathways areas, and they tend not to come up on satnav. So, do you have any examples like that? What about misplaced equipment? So if you've got an untidy van, that's one thing. But do you remember where everything goes as well? Do you have a really good system? <clears throat> do you also misplace equipment while you're working on the job as well? So you've got stuff out, floorboards gone up, keep knocking something. Do you have any sort of procedure there as well to make sure you're not always looking around all over for tools? What about having to go for parts? Do you tend to find you're always good and you've always got everything you need every single time? And do you have a stock of smaller accessories and things? Or do you find that you spend a lot of time having to go for parts, you've forgotten something or whatever? Do you get distracted a lot? Do you lose your focus easily? Whether that's music blasting. I can't work with music blasting. Some love it, I hate it. Do you get distracted by the phone, by the customer talking too much, these sort of things. What about your coffee or lunch breaks? Do you have to keep going out somewhere every time? Are you unprepared? Do you not take something along with you? And when you do do that, does it take you longer than you expect? What about things that just take longer than you expect? For example, you go and channel, the plan is to channel out a wall. You get to that wall and it's one of these walls that's like uh, really solid below the plaster. And it's only half of the depth of a back box. And it's going to be a real pig. And that ends up taking a lot longer. You would never have known that by looking at it and going around quoting. But just when you got on with it, it took longer. Do you have many examples that are like that? Where you just... I mean, for example, it might be that all of the walls in that particular street are the same. Chances are there will be. So you can start to build some uh, knowledge from that when that happens in one and you get a call in another one in another street. So what other examples do you have, which I'd love to hear, of things that take longer than what you, in your head, you thought they were going to take so long and it ended up taking longer? What about when someone asks for some extra work to be done? What do you do about that? Do you arrange to come back later as a separate job? Or do you have a kind of limit where if you're slightly ahead of time and it's only going to take 
uh, I'm not going to say two minutes, but it's only going to take, say, half an hour. Do you squeeze it in? Or do you not allow anything to delay you for the next job? Now, you might get involved in the job and you've lifted the floorboards and you find a complete rat's nest. We all come up, we increasingly come up that sort of thing now, especially if you do inspections like I do. How does that impact? The job that you're doing. What about communication issues, whether it was a customer or your staff, whether it was face-to-face -face or on the phone or by email or text or, or the fact that you've used lots of different methods of communicating and so you've got a bit of information on a voicemail, a bit on a text, a bit on an email and trying to re-picture the whole lot of information can become tricky. What about situations like that, where something gets missed or not done quite how it was intended? What about issues doing your risk assessments and method statements and the delays in getting those confirmed with the people that you're working with and also making sure that it is actually effective? Do you have a good system for doing that as well? And one of the things we can look at later is apps and software solutions. Permits and access, so permits to be on a certain place and access into a certain building, whether it's keys or whatever it is. Or if it's for landlords, it might be making sure that all rooms on a multi-let are all empty when you go and do an inspection or an install. And also that you have to get hold of the key and that it's not out somewhere else and all these things. What about technical problems? Your devices keep playing up or you're always finding a lot of places have a low signal. Is it just the network you use or is it any of them always low in that area? Awkward or confined spaces, do they tend to lose you a lot of time if you're in an awkward position? Do you get that a lot? Do you, do you, are you aware of what sort of jobs are likely to be like that so you can factor it in? Same with hot or cold or just generally uncomfortable environments. So whether it's a loft in the middle of summer or whether it's an outdoor light in the middle of winter. Are there any things that you might put off in the winter or you can't do when it's wet? For example, you've got all your battery tools out and things like that. So what bottlenecks have you got? What things cause you to cancel or delay? And what else can you think of? So I've got three more columns there for anything else. So I'll have a think. And then with this list, if you kind of circle around the ones that are affecting you the most, then you'll have an idea of what to work on first. So you can not, all, not only get thinking about what you might do with that, but we can discuss it on the Facebook group. We can go into it in detail and whatever is the most common sort of distraction if it's not already in the later sections which chances are it will be that can be added too.